Hello and welcome to the turbo section of the build. So we're gonna start off with the dissected turbo laid out, with parts like this dynamic seal and this thrust collar, and then pulling them out one of them predictably got damaged. So since the turbo is going to be serviced, I said to myself why not go for a full overhaul. And then I came across this turbo rebuild kit from a turbo, which is for the IHI RH B5 turbo core. Now I fully buffed out the rusty exterior of the turbo core and cleaned all the parts that are going to be reused, such as this turbine wheel. Also here's an idea of how it looked when it came out of the turbo before cleaning it. And it is clear to see that the piston ring has started to fail due to leaking oil at the back end of it. And the turbine wheel was loaded with carbon deposits. The turbo housing was in good condition, but it also needed a bit of cleaning. The compressor wheel was only marked when dismantling and not tinkered with, since it's an extremely delicate item. Taking a good look at the assembly core. Nah, the core plug has been replaced with a new one for good measure. Next is the assembly procedure. The retaining rings go in and the journal bearings follow. And now comes a new bit. I have had to change the old seal with an aluminium seal, which apparently is stronger than the old unknown material that came out of it. The piston rings go in the thrust collar and then the thrust collar is placed in the seal. The seal was placed in the turbo core and bolted into place. So the turbine wheel had the piston ring inserted and the heat shield put in place. The whole assembly was fitted back into the turbo core and it is important to hear it click properly in place. Once the turbine wheel is properly installed, the compressor wheel was then mounted and the nuts tightened properly up to the markings done before the turbo was disassembled. So now is the turn of turbo number 2, and the same process was repeated. 
Now a very important note is to be addressed because when a turbo is disassembled and reassembled it is extremely important to have it checked for balance because there is a risk of being slightly out of balance which in time will destroy the turbo. However in my case I have searched many many turbo shops in Malta and no one helped me out either because they did not have the correct brackets to hold it into position for them to test the turbo or they did not trust me with my work or some other excuse regarding my rebuild such as they said that I didn't know what I was doing. So I ended up doing some research and sending them overseas and the cost to send them abroad and have them checked out would have costed me the same price as if buying two new ones. So I went with the risk of installing them and hoped that whatever I have rebuilt was efficient and effective. The turbo housing has its studs placed in and tightened into place. Now the turbo core was smeared with some anti-seize grease and inserted back into the turbo housing. The units were clamped back into position but not tightened until the right position is found again because it will require some rotating. The freshly cleaned compressor housing was sealed into place and the wastegate actuator assembled, followed by the old pipes and the waterline banjo bolts.
All the openings were sealed off, not to risk any foreign objects entering unwanted areas and risk damaging the unit. The turbo housing was finished off by having the gaskets placed and closed off by installing the wastegate collector. The next step is to prepare the manifold for installation, where it was sprayed with some high heat paint, studs put into place, followed by the gasket. Now by making sure the turbo was placed in the right position, it was bolted back into place, followed by sealing all the openings. Well I hope this video was found to be useful, and for those who have watched till the very end, and since you got this far, I will let you on on a little secret. The water cooled turbo cores are identical to that found in one of the Isuzu Trooper models with an engine of 2.8 or 3.1 liter diesel, since it shares the same low pressure turbo. So whoever wants a replacement, it's best not to go through the Maserati brand, because you'll end up paying at least 3 times as much for the same product. Hope this helped you guys and thanks for watching.